Hi everyone, wonderful people, every single one of you. Before I launch into my monologue, I just want to remind you about my patreon.com site. Go there. Go there now. Sign up to my Patreon site, and in that way you'll be showing your support for the channel, which is the right thing to do. And then you get early access anyway to new content, you get in amongst an exclusive question and answer film that we make every week. It's in every way, it's a great site. I don't mind telling you. So come along, make it even better by being there. All right, now it's time for this week's monologue. I've just come in from the back garden where I spent 15 minutes clearing up after the dogs, shoveling great piles of unmentionable where I couldn't see it. Uh, And it made me think of the general election. (laughs) I know the process matters. Don't, Don't come at me about all those that, you know, that sacrificed everything to get us the vote. I I know the process matters and, and that it matters to participate, you know, show willing. But for me, the the process in question is corrupted and compromised beyond redemption. It's the truth of it for me. It's, it's no more, I I would say than auditions for the next cast of a West End show and not even a good West End show. Um, you know, a tired old West End show, maybe that's long since passed its sell-by date. And and once the auditions are over and the new faces are in place, they'll step out on stage into the spotlights and they'll spout the same script and they'll sing the same songs because nothing changes. Because nothing that matters ever changes on account of any of these pantos. And, and so, again, people say to me, people will already be maybe uh, saying into the into the screen they're watching this on, what's the solution? Which is fair enough. Well, for me, I, I've, I, I say this, I've said this before and I'll say it again, for me the solution involves seeing the show for what it is, which is something that exists to make money for someone else by pulling the wool over our, all our eyes. It's a rip-off, it's a, a cheap contract entirely dependent on the gullibility of fools easily parted from their money, as the saying goes. And not just money, but any meaningful control over their lives. And finding a solution, you know, what what's the answer, Neil? Finding a solution to the travesty, and it is a travesty, d- demands identifying the problem. And a huge part of the problem is, I say, around 150 years old now there or thereabouts. That's roughly how long ago it was that Parliament in Britain was captured, captured by the political party system. And for all of that time, a century and a half, the electorate had been offered a miserable choice, an increasingly miserable, meaningless choice between one crook or another. That miserable choice has reached now its inevitable low point, maybe even its lowest point, on account of the emergence into plain view of what we've learned to call the Uniparty. It's worth bearing in mind, and certainly not overlooking, that exactly the same situation now prevails in the United States of America. Well, I mean, to name but one, but perhaps America is the most glaring example alongside our own, where in America, Republican and Democrat parties, like the pigs and the farmers in Orwell's Animal Farm, are indistinguishable from one another. The party system I'm talking about was imposed upon Britain and Parliament. There's no two ways about it. No one was really asked about it. It just happened at the behest of others. Every elected MP is, on account of the party system, subject and listens to not his or her conscience. And they don't listen to their electorate either. They listen to their party. It's their party that puts them in place and it's the party that will get rid of them the minute they step out of line. So that's who they answer to, the whips and all of that. And and, and it's by this sleight of hand, 150 odd years ago, this sleight of hand, that centuries, centuries of meticulous, painstaking effort to ensure that the ruler or rulers were controlled by the people and not the other way around, 
it, that, that's been ruthlessly and unlawfully undone. So before embarking on the job of finding the solution to the problem, as many people as possible have to understand, first of all, that on account of the party system, Parliament, which the Constitution, there's that word, that C word again, that I keep banging on about, Parliament, that the Constitution was designed and set irremovably in place to ensure remained always in the control of the people, is, on the contrary, absolutely and lawlessly controlled, subverted by whichever party obtains a majority in a general election. If we ever had democracy in this country of Britain, then courtesy of the party system and the corruption and the bait and switch that the party system has not just enabled but made inevitable, by now democracy no longer exists in Britain. I'm not persuaded it exists anywhere in the world at the moment. It's a dead parrot, to quote Monty Python. It, just one disastrous product of the party system is the party cabinet. Now, the cabinet that we hear so much about is utterly without legal or constitutional standing. It's a secretive entity, answerable to no one, least of all the people. Instead of by Parliament, therefore, a Parliament that the Constitution put firmly in at the command of the people, we are bossed around and herded, in effect, by that Cabinet. It is of inestimable importance, I say again, to understand and to hold dear that it is by the Constitution so carefully made and carefully protected over the course of centuries that the people are meant to govern themselves. The Constitution makes plain that we are not governed by absolute rulers, neither kings nor governments, but by ourselves. I already mentioned the powerless state of the United States. And so let's take a moment to remember how we all grew up and our parents and grandparents and generations before us, we grew up being told that the US Constitution was inviolable, sacred, of the people, by the people, for the people. How many films have we watched where people invoke the Constitution? Well, look at it now. The US Constitution, which took as its foundation and inspiration the English Constitution, which was, by the time of the drafting of the US Constitution in the 18th century, already the foundation of freedom to which every other oppressed people aspired. That holy of holies is now so much toilet paper in the hands of corrupted oligarchs, both Republican and Democrat, toilet paper of use only for wiping between two cheeks of the same arse. There's a lot of talk about democracy after all. In fact, all the time. The war in Ukraine, of course, was supposed to be about defending democracy. Ha ha. In fact, apparently in the name of democracy, the death cult that is well, United States or indeed Western foreign policy has invaded and sought to take control of one nation after another. Do you remember voting for any of what's happened in the last four years? Do you remember voting for lockdown? For no jab, no job? Do you remember voting for the closure of schools? Do you remember voting for businesses to go under? Do you remember voting to give your tax, pounds and dollars to one of the most corrupt regimes on earth, Ukraine? Do you remember voting to send bombs to be dropped on women and children? Do you remember voting for British Armed Forces to get involved in Ukraine, in Gaza? Do you remember voting to be silenced about all of it? Do you remember voting to be too afraid to speak? Too many people here in Britain are oblivious to what we've lost on account, not only, not only, but also on account of the capture of Parliament by the party system. I mean, I could go into all manner of other aspects, but I've only got so much time. The Constitution, an understanding of what it says, is still the route to our salvation. I'm sure of it. No matter how much they 
the bad actors connive and obfuscate and lie, the Constitution is as out of reach of those thieves as it ever was, regardless of what you might be invited to think. As was true on the day it came into being, no king or government may disregard, far less change, a word of the Constitution. They may only administer it. Enshrined in the Constitution is the jury system. Something else I bang on about, and that I've only recently learned to bang on about. And only because it matters to the life of free people like a beating heart. The jury system, in its original form, and not the corrupted, compromised, gelded form in which it appears to exist now, on account of the complicity of a judiciary that is as corrupted as Parliament. The people, the members of the jury representing the people, is supposed to judge not just the accused brought before them, but the very justice of the law itself. And if that is found wanting, if that legislation is found wanting, then it's up for dismissal in and of itself. And also, courtesy of the Constitution, it was intended that via direct representation in the House of Commons, the people would then control government. In fact, while we're on the subject, we have to stop using the word government in relation to MPs and correctly label them as what they are supposed to be, which is administrators, elected not into power, since the only power belongs always and only to we, the people, but into office. That's the, that's the extent of it. They're voted into office to do an office job. The solution to our problems must begin by realising, knowing that it is on account of the application of the party system that Parliament, the people's Parliament, has been placed in a stranglehold. Any notion of democracy is thereby suppressed and instead we have totalitarian authority by which, if we tolerate it, we are made subservient to politicians. Now, it's often repeated that any political party, every political party exists for two purposes only. One, to get into power and two, once in power, to do whatever must be done to remain in power. That's what the parties are. With that much in mind, it should go without saying that any political party which can, and via the party system they have, will by the drafting and passing of legislation write itself into a higher and higher authority, ultimately putting itself in a place from which it can't be removed by us or by anybody else. Any of them, those elected MPs, acting on behalf of the party system is made immune to any sort of personal responsibility. No matter the scale and the horror of the disaster into which the nation is walked by those MPs, none is personally culpable. I say this now with Russian warships off the coast of Cuba, armed with weapons that can hit the White House in minutes, and similar weapons... American and British in origin, sitting in Ukraine, just minutes of flight from the Kremlin. The ghost of the Cuban Missile Crisis is back with a vengeance. And our MPs, their ilk in Congress in the US, with only profit and egos in mind, presume to do as they like, without a moment's regard for the welfare, the very existence indeed of billions of people. These people are as far from caring about our best interests as it's possible to be. I say these people are sociopaths, perhaps psychopaths, and they're certainly committed only to chasing their own interests. This is where we are now, and what are we doing? In what way are we being invited to fiddle while Rome burns? We're being invited to watch the latest round of grandstanding by whichever strutting peacocks stand to declare themselves our leaders. 
courtesy of a farce, a pantomime, were persuaded to accept as the enacting of democracy. In the predictable but tragic heat of the run-up to yet another general election, talking about the Constitution is about as close to pissing in the wind as a person might get. But when it comes to answering the question, what's the solution? Then uncomfortably or inconveniently or not, the time to begin talking about the Constitution seriously is right now. The fact, as I see it, is that until enough people understand the unforgivable, not to say unlawful, disregard of the Constitution, of which generations of politicians and civil servants are guilty by now, then nothing meaningful, nothing at all, can or will be done to put right the wrong. The critical importance of our constitution was understood for the longest time and it was defended for what it was, not just by British people but by others around the world. At the height of the upheavals caused by the French Revolution, French statesman Talleyrand said, and I quote, If the English constitution is destroyed, the civilization of the world will be shaken to its foundations. The consequences of the party system are tragically plain to see. Whatever you think of what Britain was 150 or 200 years ago, while we lived in respect of and protected by the Constitution, Britain was the most powerful nation on earth. It was also the industrial beating heart of the world. Britain, the British, were custodians of civil and political liberty, you might say. And then came the party system and all of its associated corruption and lies. So I ask, are we still a nation of free people? Is the nation strong? Are we a nation with a strong sense of identity and pride? With any sense of identity and pride? Love the idea of Britain or loathe it. But until the advent of the ruin done by party politics, these islands were home to the most powerful civilization, the most undeniable civilization in the history of our planet. Now, make of that what you will. But as we count down to reloading Parliament once more with the latest round of suits, most of whom dedicated only to themselves and to their party affiliations, I say nothing will change until we learn at last from a most terrible mistake, which is to say the one we made when we stood by while political parties ripped Parliament from our hands and then pissed all over our democracy. Those we are fighting, or at least those we should be fighting, would have us believe they have the right and the power that the Constitution, fussy old document, is a thing of the past outmoded and replaced by their better ideas. This is and always will be a lie. They can't touch, they can't change the Constitution, however much they might want us to think they can. Now, we've learned to say the truth is like a lion that needs no defending, only to be set free to take care of itself. I say the Constitution is as ready to protect us as it ever was that we have only to read it and understand it. Now, you, you might say that this talk of constitution is dusty and out of date. You may think it's dull, that it makes no difference. But I say this, they didn't get Al Capone for running booze during prohibition. They didn't get him for murder. They didn't, they didn't get him for being a mobster. They got him for not paying his taxes. Just remember, we can get these bastards too at the end of the day and when you get right down to it on another technicality. <laughs>